Hey everybody, Dave here. How are y'all doing tonight? Whether it be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the second Tuesday of last week, or the third Thursday of next month. That's an actual day. Aha. As always, I've got Greg the Badger Piper with me here on Syndicated Pipe Club. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing good. Uh, especially since I haven't had to suck on any frogs. So. Yeah, sucking on those frogs. Unless they're chocolate, like from Harry Potter. We have no right to be wanting to suck on them, does it? Even though they do taste delicious, according to Saka. Yes. Yeah. And uh, considering all the poisonous frogs out there, uh, I would uh, definitely advise do not uh, put a frog in your mouth. No matter how much you may try, you may trust the herbalist. Frogs yes. are not herbs. Just remember that. That's a fact. Okay, so as I go to put on the background music for this week, I must apologize for the lack of background music in the episode last week. I don't know exactly what happened. I think one of my kids flipped a switch or pushed a button that disabled the phone from playing on live like we're doing right now and well lack of music so sorry about that but hey as long as everything wasn't static staticky and you can follow us it's all well and good besides i mean the music is only uh part of the experience what you're really here to listen to is just us true enough true enough Although I must, I must admit, having the music in the background does allow me to skip a few of the things, steps in editing, where I would have to, you know, do things like, you know, uh, cut out big gaffes in, in silence, um, some of the background noise from the fan that's exhausting the room for the pipe smoke. You can't hear that with the background music on. It's it, it's, it's not bad. It'll work. And as long no, as that, those are yeah, well, those are good points, especially like the uh, to fill the time, like when we're fidgeting with our pipes. And oh yeah, absolutely. Because after all, this is also a pipe show, right? Speaking of which, what are you smoking tonight? Well, if it will ever stay lit, I can never you know you know stop fiddling with stuff. I am smoking some C and D exclusive, which is fifty percent Virginia, fifty percent Perique, and. 100 percent smokable. Awesome. And I'm smoking it in my Trepus pipe. Uh, the odd shaped one, right? Mm-hmm. If I remember, people, I will put up a overlay on the video so you can see it. And if you're listening well, it's this weird bulldog esque sitter pipe thing we're not 100% sure what he was thinking when he made it but I can't ask him he's he's no longer with us at the same time you know I I think it's fun that it's uh, mm -hmm. such a such a different pipe oh yes it's a great pipe it, it's different that's why I have it like when in, in the auction I got this thing in it was uh, there were a couple of you know like billiard just standard shapes it had this this type of rustication on it like that's on this pipe for those of you who got to see a picture you know what i'm talking about uh, maybe i can put it in the show notes or something like that for the uh for the podcast so check that out see maybe maybe it's there maybe you can uh see what see what i'm talking about but tv talking wise we're looking at avatar episode 13 of season one the blue spirit tonight which is where all the frog talk came from a few minutes ago yes although uh, before we jump into that uh just smoking some uh brett ray's hell the wind and my uh briar patch forum uh exclusive uh missouri meerschaum uh bing pipe which i picked up at the missouri meerschaum uh, shop down uh, Missouri. Excellent. Yes, the Blue Spirits. 
which we could not remember the, oh, yeah, the yes. title of the episode. Oh, yeah, just before we got on. I watched it like, oh, probably about 7 o'clock my time, which is just about three hours, three and a half hours ago. So, like, really close, so the episode's fresh in my mind, and so you're going, okay, but I can't remember the episode. Greg couldn't remember it either. I had to hop on hop on Netflix really quick and, and get that for you, so... There you go. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were just going to call it the frauds and see if you noticed, but uh, uh, they've decided to go for the accurate title. Yeah, yeah, an accurate title. Uh, that's always fun. There we go. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm, I'm playing with the uh, with the sound a little bit. The mic was giving me some problems, and now, now all before now all the sounds out of whack. And it sounds great, but the levels. Uh, it's it's just one of those technical nights. So hopefully this turns out okay. I, I can only play only play with it so much and we're using budget mics. I've got a good one, but uh I wanna you know, it's just one of those things. I'm trying to keep the sound consistent. So I'm using the same brand of mic that Greg's using on his end. So, you know, just for consistency's sake. And they do sound good when everything lines up properly. It's just getting it there. Right. And sometimes take years. Yeah, I might be fiddling with it through the whole episode. Who knows? But as long well, as you guys I was, enjoy I, I was, it. Well, I was just joking about uh, my awful mic that I used for a long time. Well, yeah, that that's true. That's true. I was using the AT2020, and you were just using like a headset mic with your with your cell phone. <laughs> I'm I'm sure the uh, the audience appreciates the new mic. Yes. Again, thank you, Marcus. Mm-hmm. We can't thank you enough. Okay. What are your thoughts on Avatar, since I've been monopolizing most of the time of talking so far tonight? Yeah. Um, so this one uh, comes right off the tails of the last episode, since uh, probably like a, just a day or two after what happened uh, in the previous episode of The Storm because Sokka is uh, sick from the everything that went on during the storm. And uh, so he's, he's pretty much uh, taken out for this episode. And likewise, Katara doesn't really have a whole lot to do this episode. Um, although the stuff that she does do with uh, uh, Momo is really funny. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a great great episode for for humor and comedy and uh yeah it, 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 it's, it's it's fun for sure yeah um like overall my thoughts on this episode were um again like it, in some ways it it's like a perfect kind of uh companion episode to the previous one kind of like a two-parter and you don't really realize it until uh the end of the episode mm -hmm. but much like how last week we had uh ang and uh, zuko's stories uh before uh they ended up on this uh, you know kind of chase adventure uh here we have uh well you know obviously you know we're, we're just gonna just go ahead and spoil it but uh you know Aang, you know, gets rescued by this uh, character uh, that uh, is wearing a cool mask, uh, but dressed in all black otherwise. And uh, uh, after he gets rescued, Aang has to kind of save him and discovers that it's uh, Zuko that saved him, uh, which we'll get into to why in a moment. But uh, what, what makes it interesting is that final scene where they're together. I feel like uh, with Aang talking to, to Zuko uh, at that moment, being kind of vulnerable, it uh, that's what ties it all together for me in, that, uh, in making this just uh, a really well thought out, well told uh, two-part episode, whether it's, it was meant to be a two-parter or not. It's uh, very much, uh, I think, it should be showed side by side. Yeah, it absolutely should. I mean, they uh, they play very well off each other. It's it's they're both good episodes. They're like you said, a direct continuation of the story from the storm right into 
you know, the blue spirit. And uh, again, it, it's uh, it's also uh, some good background for the, some of the choices that uh, Zuko makes. Because he just uh, goes on ahead and uh, does his thing so he can regain his honor. The Zuko's theme for the first two seasons of Avatar. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, like with this episode, you know, Aang you know, has to kind of go on this quest to help his friends get uh, better. And uh, goes to see uh, this uh, herbalist tells him to get these frozen frogs uh, from the swamp and that uh, when they thaw you know, and that um, by sucking on them while they're frozen that will help uh, heal both uh, Sokka and uh, Katara from their sickness. Um, meanwhile, you have uh, and so, so Aang has to go and hurry that, uh, that way. Then you have Zuko, who's dealing with uh, uh, Zan, is it? Admiral Zhao. Uh, em- em- Emerald Zhao. Who uh, just who recently is, became uh, em- became Admiral, like this episode, near the beginning. Yes. Uh, basically, it, he's, you know, he's basically trying to step over uh, Zuko and find the Avatar and get all the glory for himself. And so, but Zuko... Know, is very much intent on getting his honor back and he's not going to let go of the avatar without a fight and has kind of it i'm guessing kind of just a, an instinct, instinctive knowledge that uh, he's on his way to to snatching the avatar uh because zang that because uh, then um zuko that goes off and uh essentially in, infiltrates where uh, Zhao is and uh, kind of keeps tabs on him. And again, well, also we have this other plot where um, they've been, uh, Zhao has uh, enlisted the help of this uh, group of elite archers, which that the chase scene through the forest uh, where Aang's trying to get away from the archers. Like, that was uh, a pretty cool, intense uh, fight scene. Well, it, not not necessarily as much of a fight scene as it is, was a kind of a chase. And uh, where they're just like, you know, Aang's using his powers, but like the, the archery is just, uh, the, the arrows, are, it's just relentless. And ultimately, just the sheer number of them and their aggressiveness just overwhelms poor Aang, and uh, he's captured and put in this fortress, uh, where he finds out that uh, he's not going to be killed, uh, because that means that uh, the Fire Nation's just going to have to go back to looking for the Avatar again, but instead, they're going to keep him alive as long as they can, but barely. Uh, which is kind of a miserable looking fate for poor Aang. But that's when uh, Zuko arrives as uh, this shadowy masked figure. And what really brings on like the really interesting part of the episode is seeing Aang work together with this shadowy kind of mysterious figure, which uh, I early on, you know, I kind of... Re- I believe I had seen this episode at some point because at some point I was like, oh, I bet this is, I think this is uh, Zuko, which I I, I was right. Um, But uh, still seeing the two work together and really seeing the abilities of Zuko on display with him not using his fire bending abilities to remain hidden, to keep his identity hidden. Instead, just doing his natural, uh, uh, just uh, martial arts, was uh, really impressive to watch. Yeah, it, it does speak to the type of martial artist that Zuko actually is. I mean, 
he is a bender for sure. The fire, we weaponizing the fire, of course, is powerful. But at the same time, you've got a guy here who can just fight with the best of them and not be lost without his bending. I mean, look at Katara right now in this particular point in the series. We're 13 episodes in, but if Katara lost her bending, she'd be useless. Mm -hmm. She's relied on her bending for her, as minimal as it is, for her whole life. So, to cut that off from her, you're cutting off her primary weapon. Right. But, uh, yeah, like, I mean, Zuko goes, comes in, he uses the swords, he's using the martial art forms, because even without the bending, those forms are, are, are great for defense or offense. It's, uh, it's, it's all good. I mean, kudos also to the animators for animating those, like, properly. I do mm -hmm. believe if you slow that down, you can learn a couple things. If you watch really closely about a few of those uh, moves that Zuko is using, because I recognized a couple of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he does that. He, he's very stealthy. And uh, just, it, it's fun to watch him move and to get around. And especially, too, like, you know, earlier in the episode, we see him practicing on his ship. And he's kind of just, you know, thrashing around, just, you know, purposely doing, like, these... You know, kicks and punches, which, you know, look, you know, certainly if you got hit by that, that they would hurt, but uh, it's felt more kind of like tantrumish, right. uh, reckless. Um, but here, what, you know, especially when you look back and realize that it's Zuko and, and seeing everything, like it's very calm, controlled, uh, almost, uh, you know, kind of like a, a different person. And uh, it's, really interesting to just compare the two. Absolutely. And, uh, and it's cool too, like the, with the escape scene, just seeing the, the two of them working together and working as a team. Although uh, <laughs> I, I had to laugh like as they're as a uh, gang and uh, Zuko was escaping. Aang is just, you know, shouting really loudly and, and talking. Um, like, I need to get the frogs for my friends and, and stuff and everything. As uh, Zuko is, like, grabbing him and dragging him away. And I, as I'm watching this with my wife eating dinner. I'm going, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And she's like, what? Uh, do you not like his character? And I'm like, no, like, you have to they're escaping and here he is just talking loudly like uh you want to if you're escaping like that you want to just have a little bit of uh, some stealth there and not give yourself away yeah but ang was protected by something else plot armor mm -hmm. because while you are absolutely 100 percent correct he needed to shut his mouth and be quiet yet nobody hears him the alarm's not raised till Admiral Zhao comes in, talking about, you know, sending his beautiful speech off to the Fire Lord, and glowing, glowing reviews from the high-ranking officers that were there. Um, he's the one who notices the knocked-out guards and finds the Avatar missing. So, plot yes. armor saves the day again. Yes, uh... Yeah, <laughs> uh, although I have, I have to imagine that in his head, Zuko was probably th thinking the whole "shut up, shut up, shut up" kind of. Oh, thing. probably. Oh yeah, wow. and uh... and then just that whole sequence of uh, them going out and uh, basically trying to make their way out of the fortress. And, and escape is it, just another 
well choreographed kind of sequence because you, you have a moment where they can escape through the front door, but uh, and Aang could make it if he wanted to, but he would have been leaving Zuko behind and instead stops and uh, comes back for him, even though that means that exit is now cut off from him. And yeah. now they have to kind of fight their way out. And uh, they do, like, and in, in a very uh, impressive way. Although at the end, Zuko basically puts the, them in a bind by, uh, you know, grabbing Aang and putting a, a sword against his throne and basically, like, you know, knowing what uh, Zhao wants and uh, basically forcing him to let them go so that nothing happens to Aang. Right. I mean, uh, when you say you and you need the Avatar needs to be taken alive, well, Zuko made the most strategic move he possibly could. He threatened the Avatar's life. Like, that was perfect strategy. And, uh, but all, and then, you know, but once they make their mistake, and this, uh, escape, uh, Zuko gets taken out, uh, with, uh, and, arrow to the mask which bounces off of him but knocks him out and then Aang's forced to kind of escape and take him with but that's when he realizes who saved him yeah and ultimately leads to you know the, the, the final scene of them together which is them hidden in the forest and uh, Zuko waking up and Aang sitting there you know looking off and, and basically uh talking you know talking to Zuko but all you know seemingly also kind of talking to himself you know, and reminiscing about a hundred years ago with uh, all of his friends and everything and that you know, one of his very best friends was someone from the fire nation and he turns and asks Zuko you know if we met a hundred years ago do you think we could have been friends and you know, just this really nice and poignant question, uh, because you know, we, we see you know they work really well as a team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, seeing that uh, they're, you know, they have gone down some very similar paths with uh, their history. You know, they both uh, forced to kind of grow up. A lot earlier than they you know, were meant to, with uh, you know adults that uh, basically were forcing their way onto these two. That uh, they have a lot in common, and uh, Aang uses this moment to kind of try to reach. You know, Zuko in some sort of way, but of course Zuko you know, flees and runs off. But uh, and even at the end, when you see the two of them, you know, make it back to where they're staying, they both you know head to bed after an exhausting uh, night. That uh, you know, it's this question of uh, you know if the situation was different and there was no war going on right now, and they were just living their lives. Would they have uh, been friends? Probably. I, th I think so. Like, just because we know a little bit of foreknowledge, we know how the series ends up. They do end up being friends. So it makes sense that had Zuko been born 100 years prior and met Aang then, they probably would have been friends. Like, it seems, yes. seems to be pretty uh, well set out. Absolutely. Okay. Um, then, of course, we get Sokka's best line of the entire episode right at the end of this. Hmm. Whatever this is, is pretty tasty. And then the frog thaws out right in his mouth. Right. <laughs> and, Classic. Uh, of course, yes. Yeah. And I love to, um, again, with the... Um, 
don't know if you'd call it the C plot or whatever with uh, poor Katara trying to communicate with Momo. Just the <laughs> treasure trove of items that uh, Momo has brought to brought back with him to them. That is not the water that she was uh, hoping that he would get. Must admit that was a that was a pretty. Uh... I'm not sure what that move maneuver was. Probably desperate. Because they do need water, I mean. When you're sick, one of the things you know you need to do is stay hydrated. And apparently in the Avatar universe, that remains constant too. Yes. But of course, I love to the, you know, shifting to Momo's perspective for a moment. Hearing Katara speak to him is like the kind of a language. Yep. Although I do find it interesting that there, there are a couple times they do switch to Momo's perspective in this, and have you ever noticed they always tinge his perspective green when you're looking so. through his eyes? It. Uh, it's just something that, that I caught today, and uh, it kind of reminded me of how Seven of Nine sees things in uh, Star Trek Voyager. Whenever they, they switch to her perspective, if you're seeing through her eyes, it's tinged green, because that's the board color. But uh, it just reminded me of it, because it was, I think, pretty much the same tint. But I'm no color expert. Right. Man, um, overall, you know, this is another strong episode, uh, and uh, you know, with, with it too, like you really had it all. You had action, but you also had, uh, you know, the emotional elements too. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, one of the reasons, if not the main reason, this show has endured over the last twenty years, is because. There are so few episodes of it that are weak. Like, every show has their weak episodes, but there are so few that even the episodes that we get of Avatar The Last Airbender that are weaker episodes, they're still strong episodes. Right. So as we were talking about last week, about uh, the things that may be going on with the Netflix live action um, Avatar The Last Airbender show. Um, I can understand if the the creators are worried about, hey, these are not going to be as strong of episodes as we think they're going to be. We want them to be... As I'm, I'm sure what they want is a, a more a more true to life a true to life true to life yeah true to true to their story like they want those strong episodes and and whatnot and, and i understand i think that they're going to make uh, each book a little bit like they're going to do a certain i was reading that they're going to do certain uh to a certain point per season for this i think the plan is to cut if i read it right if i remember what i read correctly is to cut uh season one of the live action off um, at the end of the Winter Solstice episode where they go to Roku's Island, which we're coming up on pretty soon. And I, and I, I do think that would be a good... If they're if you're going to gonna stretch out a live action see, see season, um, that would be a good point. To make that, like, in, instead of doing it in two parts like they did with this because it's only like a kids show here animated kids show you can put those two episodes together and make one 45 minute episode and have a good episode there so hopefully if they do that they, they do it right yeah and hey you know like this new series it could it could be fine it won't be if they do the high school musical thing it won't be that's just not going to work right But 
bunch. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're, we're pretty well covered on that. Um, I do want to, though, because um, I'm in the know, though, for other, other podcasts, and I'm not talking about Star Wars TV talk. Um, something that interests me, and it'll, it'll be fun to, to listen to them. Uh, I know the guys that do Flash TV talk. Um, because the season is now over for The Flash, are going to be moving on to their um, between-season content. And they're going to be covering uh, WandaVision and uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Loki over the next little bit. So they're going to be doing mini-series, Wanda TV Talk, Wanda, WandaVision TV Talk, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier TV Talk, and Loki TV Talk. So... If you want to tune into those, if you're interested in those uh, Marvel series, that's the best place to go for it. Go listen to Bo and Bell on that. And I just want to give them a little shout out for that because I'm interested in hearing what they what they have to say. I've already watched two out of three of those seasons, and it's going to give me a reason to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier because I was never really interested in that one. Yeah. I like those characters, but... Uh... Just, uh, I, I like, like, I like those characters, but, uh, you know, without Steve Rogers, uh, I don't know. It doesn't interest me. And, uh, I wish I could say I was interested in this, uh, What If series, because I like, uh, at least the concept of the comics. I've always found it, like, really interesting, like, uh. Like one of them, you know, was about like, uh, you know, what if Uncle Ben had lived in Spider-Man story? How would that have changed uh, how Peter Parker is Spider-Man? So like you can get some interesting like ideas out there, but uh, unfortunately right now, it seems like they're only content with uh, telling stories about uh, what if uh, uh, this diverse person was the hero instead of uh, the hero that... uh, we had for the movies and to me okay if you do an episode like that that's fine but uh, I I don't think that's really the interesting story because we uh, to me it's more interesting when we look at the characters in and of themselves that we know it's not necessarily like who's wearing the suit but who's underneath the suit you know and that's that's who we're kind of interested in, and you know I got that you know we were somewhat familiar with um, what's her uh, Peggy Carter, and we're familiar of course with uh, you know Black Panther, but uh, I don't know I I'm more interested in uh, like what if uh, you know Captain America was. Uh, you know, discovered at a different time. Um, you know, maybe after the events of uh, some of the stuff going on in the Avengers world. Um, I'm not interested. You know, I, I think those are the more interesting stories rather than, uh, or the like the choices that characters make rather than, uh, you know, someone else wearing the suit. Okay, but that's exactly what they're doing with those characters. Right. Because what they did in What If... I don't know if you've watched them, but I, I have, and mm-hmm. that's what they did. Like, in Captain America, Peggy doesn't stay on the floor, but she made the choice in What If to stay on the floor, and that's what made the change. And in the uh, Black Panther a- episode where T'Challa ends up being Star Lord instead of Peter Quill. Yondu, instead of going and picking up Quill himself, outsources it to Taserface and uh, oh, I want to call him Kirk because that's who he played in um, Gilmore Girls. Uh, what's it? Craglin, Craglin. Mm-hmm. It was Craglin and Taserface that went to get uh, Quill and came back with the T'Challa instead. So 
that was that was the choice. Instead of going himself to get Peter, he sent Craglin and Taserface, and they came back with the wrong kid. And that's how T'Challa became Star Lord. So th- that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, well, the, I mean, the, I, the stories me, yeah. the stories are interesting. Sure, sure, but I'm more like I'm more interested in like you know like Steve Rogers and Peter Quill. Um, like, I, if you want to do something with Star Lord uh, with uh, T'Challa, you know, there's definitely uh, things you could. Th- this is just I'm not saying that uh, you know for me I'm just saying like what I would be more interested in. Just actually like seeing more stories with these, but just with like a, a twist on them, uh, rather than you know somebody else playing the. Um, you know, gotcha, gotcha. Role. Yeah, yeah. I, I see where and, you're coming from. Like, let's just say, for example, what if uh, Black Panther and War and uh, Warmonger? Oh, no, dang it, that's not his character name, Warmonger. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, the the villain from uh, yeah uh, from Black Panther? Yeah, his, his cousin. What if they worked together instead of being enemies? Yeah, something like, like that. Like, yeah, yeah. And I'm not, again, like it's not just because they're you know these characters. I I wouldn't be interested really in seeing what if Bucky was Captain America instead, or uh, or these things like. And likewise, uh, you know, like I, I just, I, we know these characters instead of, um, and we do know, and you know, we do know the characters that are, you know, taking their place. But I think it's much more. Int- we know, you know, like it'd be interesting to tell stories that changes things for these characters. We've seen how they would react in some situations. Let's let's see uh, them in these different kind of situations. Uh, so that that's where I, I guess I'm coming from. Yeah, and, and, and what you're looking for is valid too. I mean, they they would be some they would be some interesting stories too. So maybe we'll get some of those down the line. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I I don't have anything else in regards to the Avatar episode. You got anything else you want last, want uh, want to say on that? No, uh, I you know again solid episode for a solid season. All right. Well, all that being said, we will just get on to the end then. And if you want to continue to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me on various social medias. I have uh, my link tree that gives you all of my links. So one link for all of them. Just follow that, and you'll you'll get a nice little little list generated. Follow those to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. All the places. And of course, Greg is on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper and on Instagram. You're just the Badger Piper there, you know? Yes. And of course, reverse flash time at gmail.com. No one's emailing. Please, 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 somebody use it. Absolutely. I'm begging you every week now, and I have feel no shame. Please, please email us. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and with all of that being said, we will just leave you with have good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Once again, don't stick frogs in your mouth. No. Good night, everybody. <laughs>